Hi everyone, here is the second version uh, or second build of the uh, reluctance, uh, the bucking reluctance motor. So here at the front are my connectors for my uh, DC to uh, power the uh, primary coils in these two uh, identical microwave oven transformers. And the uh, eyes are on a rotor here and you can see that uh, down there in the bottom and there is one two three four four rotors with a reflective tape on there for my uh, tachometer here and uh, what you see here this band is actually a fiberglass uh, tape there's four layers of uh, under tension fiberglass tape and that's for uh, security reasons uh, and because the uh, I cores are just epoxied uh, down there. So that's a bearing basically and there is no shaft in this it's just a bolt going across and uh, riding on this uh, good good quality bearing and there is no uh, side to side play it's very tight and I'll go out here and you can see there is the uh, two e cores uh, down there and now you're seeing the uh, cores uh, basically how tight uh, that is I can give you a shot here from the uh, front end and uh, there is the i core coming out so the uh, gap is is very very tight don't think I can make it any tighter than that so Let's see here, from this side we have the uh, opto uh, sensor there for the white strip here on each uh, I-Core to uh, create the uh, on time for uh, each one of these uh, I-Cores to go through the E-Cores. And at the back here you see another set of uh, E-Core e transformers. These are the assist coils and I had basically just estimated uh, where it would go and uh, basically what I found out is as the RPM increase here on preliminary tests that I've done uh, this gets out of synchronization because the timing needs to be advanced so that the pulse um, uh, basically for the, uh, the uh, magnetic field to build in the uh, primaries here uh, to have enough time so that's something that I didn't uh, think of so these might not work until I have maybe a separate circuit to uh, trigger them so for now with this I'll just be accumulating the flyback in a uh, flyback uh, capacitor here and that'll just be on a uh, resistive load so we'll be able to figure out how much comes out in flyback uh, the other thing too, like I said, that we have to advance the timing as the voltage goes up. So my opto is uh, right here and I've got this thing that I built. Basically it's just a bolt that goes through and here I can, this direction I'm retarding the uh, timing and in this direction here I'm advancing the timing. So it's basically just a bolt that I've um, added this piece here and just preventing the bolt from going out and as, as you see when I turn it I'm now turning it so it's slowly the thread is slowly um, can give you a closer shot there moving out and then pushing away the uh, opto sensor so you see it now moving so on the fly I can make a, an adjustment for the uh, timing and I found that that is actually necessary so just wanted to show you all these things here before I uh, start it up and uh, now uh, I think that gives a whole overview of it for now. Hi everyone, so here is the bucking field reluctance motor uh, under operation and right now I'm pumping in just about uh, 20 volts at uh, one amp. And that is the uh, result there. We have 20 watts basically uh, going into the uh, motor at this time. And the uh, circuit has a uh, 2.1 ohm resistors in parallel. So it's 0.05 uh, ohm 
uh, as the current sensing resistor. And um, this here, uh, at this time, the flyback is just coming into this uh, capacitor here, this tank. And that is a 1K ohm uh, resistor. And we have uh, 77 volts, so about 6 watts there uh, coming back as a uh, collection. And that would actually, uh, what I want to do is use that and uh, send it back to the assist coils and uh, further uh, give uh, work to the motor. And these, like I said, are the uh, primary coils. And it's now uh, operating. I don't think it's happening there, but uh, the RPM at this time is exactly 1,100 RPM and it's running pretty smoothly and uh, I have here my uh, lever that I can pull and create uh, torque creating a braking action and I will do that and here is a view of the scope shot so we have um, basically 10 volt uh, divisions here and we're at uh, 500 uh, millivolts uh, divisions for the current, which is the yellow trace here. And you can see the blue trace is the voltage across uh, the coil. And uh, our on time uh, for the rotor is exactly this width of this white tape. And I'm using that for the opto sensor to uh, turn on. And that's exactly three, three quarter inches. So basically, keep in mind, we have uh, four uh, steel eyes on this rotor. So we have four times uh, three quarter inch uh, on time for a rotor that is uh, 10 inches in diameter, 10 inches across. So we have very, very small on times for such a big rotor. And I think the rotor weighs somewhere around 10 pounds. It's really heavy with those four uh, eye cores on it. Uh, so keep all these things in mind, a uh, very small amount of push happening for that size and weight of that rotor. Um, now what I'll do is I will just use the uh, voltage here and raise the voltage on the power supply and we're going to look at the uh, interaction uh, between the current and the voltage here. Oh yeah, this here that's basically my uh, shutoff time. Uh, I'll expand on that and you can see that uh, basically I'm having a hard time uh, turning off uh, my uh, MOSFET here. So I don't know where the problem lies. It may be in my opto uh, circuit. I'm not sure. But uh, that's basically wasted power there because you know it takes all this amount of time here to uh, I can further expand on that you can have a look it's taking all these uh, tries to finally uh, shut off <laughs> the uh, that's quite expanded right there so that's uh, what's going on here at the tail end but anyways let's uh, continue here with the test and here you can see the uh, flyback right there so right now I'm triggering on the uh, falling uh, edge here uh, or the off time and let's get this completely in the window here so here I can reduce the voltage here and you can see the so that is our voltage basically here that's our voltage uh, across our uh, flyback collection and um, there you go so what I want to show you now is basically varying the voltage and we'll look at what happens to the uh, current curve when we vary the voltage so here I am uh, I'm gonna go so keep in mind these are uh, uh, basically 10 volt uh, divisions here so I'll give it a good shot and we'll see what happens to the current. So there we are at uh, 30 volts. And as you can see, the current doesn't 
doesn't shoot up. It doesn't, it doesn't affect things. There I am reducing it. So the current is like linear with the uh, motor action. It's definitely not uh, as your standard motor uh, operates. So now what I'll do is I'll put it under load by uh, just pulling up on the uh, braking here. And we'll look and see. Uh, first of all, we'll take an RPM reading. So we got 1,030 RPM. And now I'll pull on this and we're gonna reduce We'll try to reduce it by 130 RPM. So, a little bit more to go. So we're pretty well at 1000 RPM. And if you look at our scope shot, well, uh, not much is changing. The only thing that changes is basically the pulse uh, width uh, you should see that right now we're fixed right here you should see that possibly reduce a little bit as it uh, recovers back in RPM but it's really really stable it just doesn't behave like a normal uh, motor and uh, I guess that's uh, what you know this is about you know just a different kind of motor one that is not affected uh, the same way. So as you see, it's pretty much recovered its uh, RPM and you can hardly see uh, any change on there. If we go back and check our RPM. So yeah, there you go. It's pretty well recovered and uh, not much effect. So let's look at the meters here now. Try to get that glare out of there. So here I will pull the, uh, the brake again here. And we'll observe what happens on the meters. So I'm pulling the brake. The RPM's going down again. Letting go of the brake. the RPM here so we definitely lost about 100 RPM there is change um, I don't know if it's changed because uh, like a normal motor you know you have basically the current is basically fighting the load here I think it's just basically the RPM the current is set at whatever RPM basically you're obtaining that's it so it's really behaving differently than a normal motor and those of you who have experience uh, observing when a motor is put on load uh, would tell that this is definitely not the same kind of uh, behavior and mostly here by looking at the scope shot uh, you know I'll give it a boost here and you can see the current is just not it's just not responding you know so there it is taking off at 30 volts I haven't even spun it at 30 volts yet this is the first time we'll let it go and hopefully it won't uh, explode because that uh, rotor yeah it exploded <laughs> okay well at least I'm happy that you got a live uh, demonstration of this uh, device before it exploded and uh, there you go the epoxy must have let go and there must be uh, a core that's jammed right inside the plywood here we can't see any exterior damages but uh, there you go that is uh, all I can do with uh, this uh, demo and uh, I guess this is going to be quite an entertaining uh, video now. So thanks uh, for uh, your interest in this and uh, hopefully we can try to figure out what this 
does or what use this has. Thanks for watching. Bye now. Okay, so I just uh, unscrewed the top and to reveal what's happened and here you can see a very uh, large uh, indentation. So obviously we have a uh, core that has uh, come apart. And here we go, here is the core that has uh, released from the epoxy. And um, that is where the epoxy was on this edge here. And uh, looking at it, I can see that I should have actually grinded this down to give it more surface. That's still the uh, varnish there. So uh, anyways, uh, there you go. Quite a demonstration that uh, is not uh, quite uh, commonly done. I don't know if my opto is still good, but uh, yeah, yeah, looks okay. So there you go. That is what happens with uh, experiments sometimes, and this is a rare occasion you get uh, to see one of GoToLuke's uh, experiments actually uh, blow up. <laughs> Thanks, bye now.